I keep hearing people say that their moringa has died and I feel one of the reasons may be because they're planting their seedling in the ground too soon. So in this video I'm going to show you what I mean along with showing you how to grow from seed. Moringa grows best in the tropics so it requires um, minimum temperatures of 18 degrees Celsius to germinate. Here in southeast Queensland this season we planted our seeds in October and November and within a week they germinated. So I'm going to show you the seeds. These are the moringa seeds. Um, we soak the seeds overnight in warm water but you can also just um, nick, nick the outer casing and then just plant it like that. Or you can peel it, which is a little bit more um, time consuming. Depends how many you have to plant. And then you, you can just plant, you can just plant that. So I'm going to plant one of these soaked ones. I've already prepared the pot. I suggest you use a, a deep pot like this one. And it's got a compost enriched potting mix filled almost to the top. Just make a hole approximately three centimeters deep and pop your seed in. You can kiss it or give it a blessing first if you like. Pop it in and then just cover the soil over. I've also got some lucerne that I've chopped up and soaked beforehand, which I'm just going to put on the top, over the top, just to keep the moisture in. Just like that. Then keep it in a um, sunny spot and don't water it um, until it germinates. Um, moringa seeds can rot, so be aware of that. And I'd suggest you leave it in the pot for the whole season for a year until the next spring. And in the next part, I'll show you why. So we've got moringa three different pots of moringa here. The first one is a seedling from this year. It's only one month old and I'm actually going to just start with that. I'm going to take it out of the pot and show you what it looks like. Beautiful growth. There's root development at the bottom already. Okay, as you can see, there's not a lot of root in the first month. I'm going to remove some of the soil, all of the soil, so you can see the taproot. This is not recommended. Don't do this at home. This is just to show you how fragile it is, because I am destroying some of the feeder root. So if you can see, the taproot is only about two centimeters long and it's white and very small. This is really fragile. So keep it in the pot, not recommended to be planted yet. This one here is a yearling. It was planted the same way as that one but it stayed in the pot for a year. Now when winter comes, when the temperatures fall below 18, 
the leaves fall and the stem can die completely like this one it's completely dead but I'm going to reveal what is below the soil and it's from anyway I'll show you okay Wow, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> so that that is the taproot. That's a year old. And you'll notice the difference in color. It's formed a bark around it. It's no longer white. And this bark makes it more resilient. You could keep this out of the ground for several months. And um, it's a good way to mail it, to post it. This you cut off. I won't break it. It's still attached. Okay. So that's a beautiful, healthy taproot. So now, if you put this taproot in the ground now, when it's warm, it'll thrive. You know, it'll start shooting and sometimes multiple shoots. So in this other pot, it's already started shooting in the pot. Also, it's been here a year. So I will take this one out as well. This one's already started shooting. Another beautiful, beautiful taproot. And there it's got two stems, two new stems that are growing from the taproot. So in the ground now and it'll thrive. So I hope that clears um, some of the questions people have as to why their moringa has died. So keep it in a pot for a year and then plant it out. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos, I'm going to be doing more. Please subscribe and um, give me a thumbs up. Happy gardening.